Hi guys, today we're going to do some math together. I have out my interactive student edition so that what I'm looking at matches what you're looking at in your workbook at home. Today we'll do lesson 12-2. It's fractions and decimals on the number line. So our learning target is that we want to be able to locate fractions on a number line and decimals in a number line. We also want to be able to describe those fractions and decimals on a number line. So hopefully that's what you'll be able to do by the end of our lesson today. So let's take a look at the solve and share together. I kind of started it for us already. It says, what decimal names the location of each lettered point on the number line? Tell how you decided. This is one of those tricky two-part questions. So I kind of want to note that when we're looking at that question up there. It says, we want to find the location of each point on the number line, and we want to tell how we decided. So let's not forget to do that part at the end. Okay, so I have my first number line. It's just a number line between zero and one. The first thing I had to do was count how many chunks, bumps, jumps they have between zero and one. So that's what I did. I said zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. So between zero and one, they've divided it into ten equal parts. That means we have tenths. So then all I had to do was just count my jumps. So I said, well, one jump would be one tenth. So I put a one in the tenths place. Don't forget to put your decimal point in front of the tenths place. And because we don't have any whole numbers here, I just had to put a zero in the ones place. I kept jumping to find my other points. So that's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, and I labeled it five tenths above. Let's do the last one together. I have five tenths, so I jump six tenths, then seven tenths. C must be zero holes and, the decimal means and, seven tenths. Let's look at the next one. This one actually looks like a longer number line. We know a line goes on forever. It's symbolized by the two arrows on either end. But this one doesn't start at zero. This number line starts at point D. We don't even know what it is. But here I can find one, and here I can find two. Well, we have to figure out what these are cut into. So between one and two, let's count the number of our chunks, jumps, bumps. So I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's broken into 10 equal parts. That's pretty good since we're doing decimals. Those are tenths and hundredths, right? So I know that each jump is worth one tenth. So all I had to do was say one and one tenth, one and two tenths, one and two tenths. Well, that one wasn't so hard. I kept jumping 1.3, 1.4, or one and five tenths, one and six tenths, one and seven tenths, one and eight tenths, one and nine tenths. So F is equal to one and nine tenths. If I jumped again, it would be one and ten tenths. Well, that's all the way to two. The tricky one was D over here. What whole number comes before two before one over here? Well, it would be zero. Zero, right? So way over here somewhere we would have the number zero. So I have to kind of go backwards. I know that one less than ten would only be nine tenths. I'm sorry, one less than one would be nine tenths, then eight tenths, then seven tenths. So I know that D is equal to seven tenths. How many holes? No holes, we have zero holes. So zero and seven tenths. Let's try this last one. I kind of got it started already. I counted to see that between three and four, there were tw 10 equal parts, tenths, and then I counted my jumps. So I said three, one tenth, three and two tenths, three and two tenths, three and three tenths, three and four tenths, three and five tenths, three and six tenths. I'm going to jump over here to four to figure out what I is, and I'll say four, four and one tenth, four and two tenths, four and three tenths, four and four tenths. So I say four holes and four tenths. We've located all the numbers on our number line. However, we didn't tell how we decided. This one's kind of easy. All I had to do was I had to count the jumps. I 
I remember to use a capital letter. I remember to use my punctuation. Let's go on to the next one. Let's see, did we need to do a, a look back together? I don't want to miss it if we need to do it. Ah, it says, is the decimal point for point B above different from the decimal for point B on the line below? I don't know. Let's see. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's still broken into 10 parts or tenths above between 0 and 1. It was broken into 10 tenths. Is the B in the same place? One, two, three, four, five, five tenths. Let's check down here. One, two, three, four, five tenths. Okay. Is it different from the decimal point on the number line below? No. They are both five tenths. Explain. You know they want us to explain. So in a complete sentence, I'm going to need to give my explanation. And I can say something to the effect of the number lines are different sizes. Shoot. But both number lines are broken into ten equal parts, or tenths. Let's go on to our next page here. On our next page, you can watch the video, the Envision It video, to see how to work that top problem there. And then it says, for convince me, which decimal, decimal shown on the number line is not placed in the correct location? Well, let's count it out and figure it out. We have zero, then we have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. These look good so far. Six tenths, seven tenths. Uh, uh, uh. I think that should be 7 tenths, but it says 9 tenths, so I'm going to circle it. 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, 1, because 10 tenths would be 1. 1 and 1 tenth, 1 and 2 tenths, 1 and 3 tenths, check. 1 and 4 tenths, 1 and 5 tenths, 1 and 6 tenths, 1 and 7 tenths, 1 and 8 tenths, check. 1 and 9 tenths, 1 and 10 tenths, that brings us all the way to 2, 2 holes, or 2.0. So that one looks good too. So which decimal shown is not placed in the correct location? 0 0.9 is not correct. You know they want us to explain, so I'll need to write another sentence. So let's see. The number should be Let's try our next one. I want to do that guided practice with you so I can guide you through it. Okay. It says locate 45 hundredths on the line. This is a little bit different. We have little hundredths instead of little tenths. It looks like we start at 40 hundredths and we end at 50 hundredths. If I count the number of jumps here, it's going to be 10 equal parts. That means between 40 and 50, there are 10 equal parts. 40, 41, 42, 43, and so on. So it says they want us to find 45 hundredths on the chart. So let's do that. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. 45 hundredths. I know that 5 is halfway between 1 and 10, and 45 is halfway between 40 and 50, and 45 looks to be exactly in the middle, so I'm feeling good about my answer. It seems reasonable. Let's try number two. In the long track speed skating competition, Elizabeth won first place, beating the competition by 0 0.8 seconds, or an 8 tenths of a second. Draw a number line to represent 8 tenths. In a word problem, I like to always circle my important numbers. So I circled first place. I circled eight tenths of a second. I know I need to draw a number line. There's my task. 
and then I have to decide what I need to do. Well, it told me I need to draw a number line. It has to represent eight tenths. What about this first place? Do I need to know what place she came in to draw a number line to represent eight tenths? No, no, don't let them trick you. This is extra information. It's a number, but we don't need it. So let's go about uh, drawing that number line. I know that 8 tenths is bigger than 0. So I'll start with 0. I know it's less than 1. We haven't quite gotten to 1, so I'll end with 1. And I know that 8 is in the tenths place. I need to divide my number line into 8 equal parts. No, I'm sorry. 10 equal parts for tenths. So I'll divide it in the middle, and then I'll divide each one of these as carefully as possible into five equal pieces. One, two, three, four, five. They're not so equal, but I do the best I can, and I know you'll do the best you can. That's all we can do. And then I have to find eight tenths. So let's count our jumps, bumps, chunks, however you want to do it. We cannot count the tick marks. If you count that zero tick mark, you're going to end up in the wrong spot. Remember, we have to count the jumps, the spaces, the chunks on the number line. So let's do that. One jump, one chunk, one chunk, three chunks, spaces. I got to five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths. I'm going to circle that and I'm going to put a point on my number line and I'll label it eight tenths there. So I did a pretty good job with that one. Let's take a look at the next one. It says, do you know how? So for three through six, name the decimal for each point on the number line. It looks like we have tenths here, and that's five tenths. Well, what's one more than five tenths? Six tenths. There I go. Here for H, I'm one before one and five tenths. One before five tenths would be four tenths. So I'm going to put one in four tenths. If you're nervous about going backwards like that, you could always start at the one. One and one tenth, one and two tenths, one and three tenths, one and four tenths, and you'd end up in the same place. And then I think they did something really cool here. They kind of took this chunk, it looks like it's this chunk here, and they broke it into little hundreds down here for us on a number line so we could see what it looks like all spread out. So we have 30 hundreds, 35 hundreds, and 40 hundreds, one and 30 hundreds one and 35 hundredths, one and 40 hundredths. And we need to find these spots. So we have 30, 31, 32, 33. So F is one and 33 hundredths. Let's skip over here. What would be one before 40 hundredths? You're thinking one and 39 hundredths? You would be correct, okay? Um, you just have to write those in here. So E was 0 0.6. 4 was um, H, which is 1.4, and so on. You can fill the rest of those in yourself. Give the independent practice a try. I think you'll do a great job.